This is Stan with Run Repeat coming to you for another shoe review. Last time I did the Mizuno Wave Knit 3 and this time we're going to do the Wave Rider. The Wave Rider shoe by Mizuno. This shoe, uh, I did some research on the shoe before I actually uh, even got it out of the box and uh, found out there's really no major changes this year to the shoe itself. Uh, which says a lot for the for the model uh, when they don't make any major changes from uh, model year to model year. So they've got a good product, or there would have been changes, uh, major changes made. The changes that were made were pretty small, and we're going to highlight those as we go through this. The price range remained about the same uh, between 120 and 130 dollars, depending on the kind of shoe you're shopping for. That's about at the average price of the shoe, so it, it wasn't any significant increase at all. Right out of the box, you'll notice that the shoe is, uh, it has a, uh, a slim down upper to it, which allows it to have that streamlined, sleek look to it. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice look um, versus another shoe that I have here, which is kind of a, it's not as sleek, I don't think, as this one. This shoe, I think, has a, has a very nice look to it. There's no excessive padding that was noted around the, uh, the uh, ankle collar or the uh, shoe, the uh, heel cup area. Uh, they said they actually reduced some of the padding. Um, I didn't notice that because when I look at other shoes, um, you'll see that they they have less padding than, uh, than, than this one uh, that we're looking at today. So I think there's significant uh, uh, padding. Uh, the shoe felt very good, very comfortable on my foot and it had enough padding to it. The uh, toe reinforcement uh, on this shoe around here is, uh, it's concealed uh, on this model. Uh, whereas most, shoe, most, of your, most of your shoes will have it on the outside, uh, sewn on the outside. This one is on the inside. And I think it just adds to the look uh, of the shoe. Now the toe box area, um, the uh, material I noticed right off is, is thicker and it made me kind of wonder a little bit, um, is it going to lose some of the breathability of previous models? And because like you'll notice, even on this shoe, uh, the, the material is significantly thinner than here. Uh, I was kind of concerned about that, but when I went out and tested the shoe, it was actually, the, it was very breathable. Um, it's not as heavy as it looks and it added zero weight to the shoe. Uh, the shoe is still remains at 9.6 ounces, which puts it in the mid-range of the shoe's weight, the running shoe's weight, the average running shoe weight. Uh, it's not uh, too light. It's not, you know, it's not over here on the light side, but it's certainly not on the heavy side either. It's an excellent shoe, and the weight was, for me, it was perfect. Um, so again, that toe, that toe box, it's, it's very, uh, very breathable. Uh, so there wasn't a problem with that. Um, the midsole area, there was no, no changes at all to the midsole area. So that, uh, you know, I got the same well-supported uh, midsole that I ran with in the previous uh, Mizuno model. It's an excellent midsole with great support. The flex grooves in the shoe, they remained the same, which provides for a nice smooth transition from heel to toe. And uh, I, know, I noticed that uh, was the same as with a, a previous model that I did with Mizuno. So uh, there was no need for any changes in that area. The tongue area, again, they said that they reduced some of the uh, padding in the tongue area. And I did notice it was a little thinner, but when I laced up, I'm still not feeling the laces across the top of my foot. So there, there isn't a problem uh, with that less amount of padding there. And I did notice that the tongue uh, is free. There's no, uh, there's no, it's not sewn to a booty on the inside here. It's free, which made me kind of wonder a little bit too when I tested it. Is it going to, is the tongue going to shift during a longer run? During a five mile run, the tongue did not shift. It stayed secure uh, at where it was when I laced up. The other thing that I do with every shoe that I get, it doesn't matter. Um, this is the first thing to come out of the shoe. There's the support you get with the factory insert. Um, to me, it's it's ridiculous it's uh it's poor there is no support there so what i do before i ever put the shoe on is i go to the store and i buy the same aftermarket uh that i insert that i use in every shoe that i get uh, so i put between the support that i get with this aftermarket uh insert and the support that's built in the shoe i feel i got an excellent ride uh, 
Uh, some people don't have a problem with the factory insert. Um, I do, and I just don't feel you get the support that you need, and I want to head off any problem that I have with, or could have, with a lack of support uh, from the insert. The shoe itself is true to size. Uh, I wear a nine and a half, and this shoe was, was true to size. The one thing that I really liked on this, on the shoe box, or the toe box with this material, is um, it's wide enough, uh, and you'll notice one thing I want to mention too, is the toe is round, is more round. You'll see in comparison to the other toe area, this is a little more pointy. This is more rounded, which is what I like because it allows for more, uh, a little more room in the toe area. My toes are not crowd crowded. Uh, that plus the material used here allows the foot to expand as you run. So it's, uh, it's more comfortable uh, for me and it gave me a good ride. And again, the shoe is true to size. I wear a nine and a half and this shoe was, uh, was right on. Uh, it wasn't too tight, wasn't too loose, but at the same time allowed some room for expansion of the foot while you run. It gave me a really stable ride, I feel, in spite of the 12 inch uh, heel to toe uh, drop, which is a little bit above average. The average shoe is, is less than that, but it didn't seem to be an issue when I ran. So, uh, and again, like I said, the average weight of this shoe, the weight of this shoe is 9.6 ounces, which is a little bit more than the average running shoe. But again, wasn't an issue. It's a good shoe in my estimation for medium range runs all the way up to a half marathon. I think for a full marathon, I would want a little bit lighter shoe, a little bit different shoe. However, any of the runs below that, I think this shoe would be excellent for. So the question you would want answered is, is this the shoe for me? Well, if you have a neutral gait and you're looking for cushioning, durability, comfort, and strong support, a shoe that fits the foot well and without being too, too tight uh, or too loose, I think this may be a shoe that you would want to look at. Um, if I was rating the shoe between one and 10, um, I would probably give it a seven, seven and a half. It's not the top of the line, but it certainly is way above the bottom of the line shoe. And keep in mind, you do get what you pay for. If you think $120, $130 is too much, consider just going out and getting a $20 shoe and anticipating the problems you're gonna get with that $20 shoe. So that's uh, what I kind of wanted to report to you. And in closing, um, I, wanna th I wanna thank you for watching this and uh, hope that you will take a look at Run Repeat's uh, channel on YouTube. Uh, there is outstanding reviews done by expert reviewers. So if you're in the, in the market for new shoes, I hope you'll take a look there because you've got some valuable information that is posted on there. That's it for the, for the Mizuno Wave Rider. I hope you uh, enjoyed the review and uh, that it'll help you make a decision as far as your uh, running shoe needs. Thank you. Have a great day.